we got some news with NVIDIA stock that are partnering with ACN. That's why you're seeing NVIDIA stock up. It kind of went up a little bit in pre-market. The day actually kind of stalled, but overall it did push up from some of that news that we will go over. We're going to go over the whole AI sector. We're also going to go over the S&P 500. We have to know what the S&P 500 is doing every day, potential bigger crash that I'm kind of watching out for. We'll go over gold, oil, Bitcoin. We'll also go over some other stocks I'm looking to build heavier positions on. Some I'm actually looking to potentially sell, which is tech. Tesla, um, if it kind of breaks some critical levels that I'm kind of watching. So let's go ahead and go to whole markets, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. We'll go over the whole stock market price predictions on multiple stocks. Any stock you don't see in the video that you want in the next video, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you run the likes up. Let's try to get the video over 200 likes as fast as possible. And that's all I ask. So let's go ahead and start off with NVIDIA stock. So NVIDIA stock did have push up, right? They had some news off of ACN. Let's check ACN to see if they had pop. They also had pop. ACN is also close to all-time high. Uh, all-time highs is like 418, so it's trying to inch up their possible play on ACN as well. We're going to go over levels on ACN right after um, NVIDIA. Then we'll go over SMCI, AMD, Dell, and kind of like the AI type uh, sector movement. But NVIDIA did have some push-up off the news that they're going to be partnering, okay? to boost AI in businesses. So that's kind of their partner that they're gonna do. Uh, NVIDIA also invested about a hundred million, I believe, in open AI funding round. So they're invested a lot in AI. That's why we bought already shares of NVIDIA right around 110. So at this price that it is now, I don't have to buy in this price. Our shares are already up. Our average is about 110. So at 110, and right now it's about 122, we're up about 11% already. So when do I want to buy more shares at NVIDIA stock? I'm looking to play NVIDIA stock. I'm looking to make money off NVIDIA stock. The first play was the long-term shares, which are already bought and we're up. The second time that I want to play it is if NVIDIA stock breaks 127.60, that's when I believe it's going to turn bullish. Technically, I am still bearish on NVIDIA stock and NVIDIA stock has been sideways. Ever since right around here, around June, we really haven't gone out of that price range right around the 120s. We're still in the same price range, okay? So technically, NVIDIA stock is sideways. We do have support at 116.35. That literally hit here. The support did not break. Literally perfect support hit A1 levels. This is why you never miss a video. And we had that pop up. Okay. So beautiful support hit. Support is still the same. Resistance level is still the same. And when I'm looking to buy new is above 127.60 for potential call options and share swings to back up to the all-time high, which is about 140. Or if we get a bigger crash, then I'm looking to buy more long-term shares below 110. So that's how I'm planning to play NVIDIA. Yes, it had a little pop, but technically it really has not done much since like June. So kind of watch out for those levels. And that's when I'm looking to really play it. Um, let's go to ACN because ACN is pretty high. But the only way ACN gets a little interesting, maybe we could play it, is once it starts breaking resistance around 379, we'll average it out to about 379.50. So I would say probably watch that resistance level. Once that starts to break, then maybe I'll try to play it up to about 400 potential on ACN. Okay. Um, AMD stock still stalled between support and resistance. Support's about 160.20. Literally hit that today. If you go to the five minute chart, look at that support all right there in that area. Big push up. And then it just dripped ever since then. So the biggest move was really like the first 30 minutes and it almost hit resistance level perfect right around 167.25 you can see the high right around once so about 50 cents away from that and the pull down occurred so amd still stuck between those levels not much i would do on amd stock right now also like dell they're kind of the same levels on dell support and resistance so we don't have to take too much time on it um support is 110.50 on dell and 128.40 of resistance avgo support is 162.70 resistance 181.60 not much to go over on uh, avgo as well so dell and avgo i'm really not looking to play them at the ranges they're in they really have to be high optimal plays for me to want to play them and they're just not yet. It's the same levels. They haven't moved out their range, right? AVGO, I'm still looking for it to break 181.60. Uh, That's when I'm looking to play it to all-time highs for like call options. It just hasn't done that yet. So I'm just being patient on it. SMCI, after the big crash of the Justice Department's probe, that's kind of going on. They are um, 
still sideways, I would say. They really haven't had they really haven't moved much after this big drop. We got support right around $39.40. Remember, they did have the stock split. I am looking for some more pull down on it unless we break resistance of 4575. If we break that, then I'm possibly looking for a bigger push higher on the higher side. I might play that of a shares play. Not really options. SMCI is not a stock I play options on. We have very key metrics. Whenever you join the team, first in the description, make sure you join. We literally are winning every week. You can see some plays we did today. We did some Disney put option plays, did about 20% on those. We did um, some Apple calls. I actually lost about 12%. Then we did some spy puts, and I made about 18% on those. So averaged out about a 25% gain today off of three plays, right? That's why I say just make sure you join. You got all the prices here. They're about to go up. Literally, when you go look right now, they're about to go up today and they're about to go up again on Monday. I forgot to change them this week. So maybe you can snag it while it's still low, $7, $7.90. But we got the yearly lifetime memberships that comes with personal training and also personal training by itself down here. And I'm actually turning this whole personal training side into like an academy format. So it'll be way better. Also, any questions, email me, willknowledge77 at gmail.com. Okay. But back to SMCI, yeah, it's same levels on SCI, and we're just kind of waiting for it to get some more directional movement off of this big news because even though this is a big drop, SMCI is still kind of saw sideways right now ever since about like August 28th. So over a month, it just really hasn't moved out of this range, and I also don't want to buy in this area that it's in currently, okay? It just doesn't interest me to kind of buy in that range. Let's go to Intel because Intel is literally still dropping. It closed at the support today at $22.20. If you can tell, look at that. It just traded all through the support. So this is still support holding price, right? Because it came right back at um, by the close. So I'm still watching 22, 20, and 21. Other than that, I'm not looking to buy any more Intel. We already bought at the low price, so there's no point of buying it in this range, especially when Intel is not really looking like it wants to go up right now. It kind of dropped all week. Um, if it breaks $21, I'll probably sell the rest of the Intel shares. I'm only really looking to buy more Intel shares unless we break $18. If we don't break $18 on the downside, I'm just holding the shares that I already have to hopefully maybe still go up to 25, 26, even though it kind of already hit it here. We sold most of the shares of Intel right here. I think we sold about 60% and we still have 40% left, right? So we'll kind of see what Intel does, but I'm not looking to buy any more new in this range, right? The ones that are getting close to maybe buying are maybe NVIDIA, AVGO, if it breaks that resistance level, and maybe AMD for scalping reasons, we'll see. But that's kind of like the whole AI sector. Um, Apple, the only thing I would do on Apple, like I told y'all, Apple's very nasty in the range, as I showed y'all. The only thing I would do on Apple is if Apple broke like 227, I would literally scalp it to like 228. So like a dollar move um, tomorrow is what I'm kind of watching out for. That is something I'm looking to buy tomorrow, aka why it says buying Friday. Apple calls is probably what I'm looking to buy if we break that 227, looking to trade that to 228. So we could write it right here. If 227 breaks uh looking to play calls to 228 so that's what we're kind of i'll be looking out for tomorrow for a potential scout play that could pay around 10 to 20 percent gain so say you put like a thousand dollars you'd be looking to make a hundred to two hundred dollars possibly if that level breaks and if we get that nice push so that's what i'm kind of looking out for a potential scout play we we literally scalp every morning with options you see that uh the personal live streams private live streams to bring consistent profit, then everything else is like secondary, like shares and all that. It's all secondary. So that's Apple. Meta stock pretty much about to hit all time highs. So you can look out for that tomorrow. Meta stock really doesn't interest me in the range that it is now. Google stock also did break resistance. So I'm going to clear everything off of Google. And there's really not much I would do with Google stock. If you're watching Google stock, it's kind of in a nasty range. Let's go ahead and go over to Tesla. It hit support today right around 240. Look at the five minute chart. Nice big drop on Tesla and just stalled right at that support. So support is holding price after this big drop. So what are the next plays that I'm looking out for on Tesla stock? Longer term, I'm not looking to buy any more long-term shares on Tesla stock. Okay, not in this range. Our long-term shares are up about 25%. Okay, so that is good. So I'm leaving it there. I don't plan on buying anymore. Also, every day they move, they are getting closer and closer to um earnings right they have earnings on the 16th of oh no hold on, i'm tripping they have earnings on the 23rd of october so there's no point of me buying heavy before their earnings 
I don't know why this orange level is there. It's supposed to be right. So there's no point of me buying early before the earnings, okay? They also have some price target lowered. Um, I think Gunningham lowered their price target to about 134, and they maintain in a rating of sell. I'm not really worried about that. Uh, we are building a new company, by the way, a pure analyst company by our level. You know, our levels are A1, so imagine when that happens, but that's coming soon. But 240 uh, support level, resistance level needs to change. I'm going to put it at about 260.20. Watch that. I am bearish on. 260 20. I am bearish on Tesla and Tesla just getting to some very I might start inching off a little bit of my Tesla long positions because I feel like Tesla might want to drop back down like to the 180s. Not yet, but if it keeps breaking these support levels, I have about three more. If three of those breaks, then that means Tesla really wants to go back below 200. And I'm gonna cut a little bit of the long position, take some profit, and just maneuver that profit to other stocks that are better uh, pricing right now, aka like Nike, I like where Nike is, and also Disney, I like where Disney is, right? They can be big movers um, by the end of the year and in 2025, and I just want to make sure I have a big enough position for those so whenever they start moving, I can catch them, right? Because Disney, if y'all look at Disney, Disney had a phenomenal move from like October all the way to March that we actually caught and we got 220% gains while other stocks didn't move. So that's when I'm making sure I have big positions on for when Disney might want to do that move again. So we're kind of like double dipping on these big moves. So I'm not going to sell the whole Tesla position, just a little bit, maybe like 20, 30% of the profit and just maneuver that to other stocks that are in better pricing and valuations right now, like Disney, Nike, and some other ones. I'll let y'all know. Also like MO is starting to pull down. This is a good dividend. They're very low. Let's see. If you look at MO, very good growth over the years. They only drop around 40 to 60%. The drop from the high right now currently that we are in is about 35% and they went as low as Hold up. They went as low as 60%. So they did around their measured drops and they went right back up, right? So if they drop more, they're just probably just going to go back up. So this is like a good long term. I'm kind of watching MO, also like O Realty, AT&T, and so forth. So let's go ahead and go over to gold. So gold still bullish, support 1920. If it doesn't break that, I'm still bullish on gold, looking for it to go back up to $22. You're just kind of stalled after a nice run up, right? We kind of got to balance out, balance out the pricing. But I would say just watch that support. If that starts breaking, then I'll probably turn bearish on gold and we'll look for gold to the lower side. But if it holds the support, I'm looking for gold to just run back up exactly like how it ran down here. It hit our critical support and went up. That's just, that's what I'm kind of looking out for here. So gold is pretty simple, not too much going on with it. Uh, OXY, and we look at the market very monster eyes, right? We don't look at the market like retail just because something is going up. We have to play it or going down, play it. You want to be very strategic, have a follow step process, and be very strategic on what you play. Have a goal you want to hit per week. Once that goal is hit, you're literally done trading. You don't have to keep on trading the market just because the market is open, okay? Then we have very big news tomorrow we're going to go over as well. Um, Oxygen Petroleum, remember what I told you, if it breaks 52, we're probably going to be a bigger retracement higher, and that's exactly what we're in. It's also breaking 54.40, and resistance now is not that clear, so I'm going to just take resistance off for now. I'm going to let it move, and then whenever it feels like kind of getting out of this range because we had a big drop, so it's just coming back up into that range. So in this area, we just have to see what it's doing, right? I'm still bearish on oil. But we just got to see what OXY is kind of doing at this range. And then if you look at OXM and if you look at Chevron, they really didn't drop as much as like OXY did. So Chevron's pretty stalled. It's going up a little bit, but overall kind of stalled. And then OXM stalled. OXM almost at back to all time highs, actually. So they're moving a little bit different than OXY. That's why I'm kind of more focused on the OXY side. It follows oil a little bit better. But yeah, just kind of watch out for that. It's a little critical. Boeing, I mean Boeing. BTC support fifty eight thousand six thirty. BTC is really not much to go over. If I'm being honest, trust me. Once Bitcoin breaks seventy thousand one hundred, that's when it's going to be all hands on deck on crypto side. That's when I feel like crypto is really going to start booming, and we'll be in the next crypto cycle of that bullishness and everybody's going to try to chase it. But I want to build in positions before that breaks of what we're doing. We haven't bought in a while, but maybe I'll start buying soon. We'll kind of see. It just depends on Bitcoin breaks to short term resistance. If it does, the Bitcoin might want to trend all the way back down below 50,000. If it does that, I plan on buying more below 50,000. And then Ethereum, I plan on buying more below 2000. So Ethereum is kind of getting close below that 2000 actually. So that's what I'm kind of looking out for the next buys. Um, 
they just don't seem like the crypto cycles ready yet to really start booming. And if you go to Coinbase, if you look at MSCR, Hood, all the like crypto area focused stocks, they're still kind of pulling down, right? So I do plan on buying more Coinbase on the 140s, below 140s, kind of averaging them because I think the next cycle will be over $300. I talk about it all the time, okay? Then with all the China stimulus package and it kind of boosts all the China stocks and everything. By the way, Alibaba did invest about 1 billion yen uh, to enhance its Tabio platform, if I'm saying that right, in Hong Kong, providing free shipping for orders over 99 yen to 800 pickup uh, such a, a station. So intensifying competition with JD. So as you know, JD pushed up. Neo had a little push up. Baba had a little push up off like that China stimulus package. We already got Baba shares. We bought it at $87. I warned y'all about Baba and then it is up a lot. We just really haven't had that big pull down yet of where I want to buy more. So I would need a bigger pull down on Baba. I would say it would at least need to offer a 10% drop from its recent high. So say it made a high here. It would at least need to drop 10%, which will take us all the way down to maybe like 104 for me to think about buying again. But right now, we still have about 15% left of our shares. That's up about 30%. 115 hit also on my BABA target. I show y'all here, we bought BABA shares a while ago on uh, September 19th, I believe that was the date. You can see here BABA shares, long hold, where we bought, the exit price of where I was exiting, the cut price, everything, right? So we already bought BABA and my exit price was 115. And you look at Baba right now, it went all the way up to about 116. So the reason I bought Baba is pretty much done. Right now, I'm just waiting to see a bigger pull down. I'll play it again. If not, I'm just kind of holding the last 50 percent of shares to see if Baba still wants to continue to higher prices. But I am looking to buy Baba again. I think it could still run. It just needs a bigger pull down first. OK, but yeah, that's why I say make sure you guys join the team because you're literally missing out on all those. And make sure when you join the team, you're trying to become a monster and you're not trying to stay retail. I don't teach indicators. I don't teach, I don't teach patterns. I'm not on the market 24 seven. I'm not looking at the market eight hours a day. Okay. We're literally live for like an hour, usually every morning. And we're literally done for the day. Okay. Go do something else. Go run, go hike, go swim. Just don't be looking at the market all day. Okay. Uh, Boeing, they're going to cut healthcare benefits for 30,000 employees amid ongoing strikes over wages. So just more side on Boeing. I do want to play Boeing. Okay. They're very, they're not going to go anywhere. They, Literally make all, most all the planes. Go look at your aircrafts, United, American, Delta. They're usually all Boeing. So I do think Boeing has a strong support, maybe around like the 143s. I do believe Boeing is going to like the 145s. I thought about getting puts on Boeing, uh, swing puts on Boeing tomorrow. That might be something I'm buying. Uh, swing puts for Boeing to go down to, what did I say it was going to go down to? I think it's going down to about 146. So let me put a target down there. That's a down one. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking for Boeing to go down here. That's my target on Boeing. So I might get put options, swings, see how those play out. I might get those tomorrow to see if Boeing could continue going down. We're also getting close to earnings on Boeing on October 23rd. I think that's the same day that Tesla um, uh, posts his earnings as well. AMC is in the gutter. Really nothing to go over AMC. It doesn't give me anything to buy. And then GameStop, of course, is dripping. Hopefully you guys listen to me. I said if it breaks this, $23.75, then it get interesting. If it doesn't, it's just no buy for me. And all it did was almost hit that perfectly. The high was 20, 2364. So it was about 11 cents away from that. And all it did was just crash back down. So hopefully you listen to the analysts and my predictions. Of course, none of this financial advice, but I just didn't want to play anything until it broke that. And it didn't. And it just went right back down. DJT, a little green today. I think it'll get better closer to election. So the closer and closer we get, you'll probably start seeing DJT get a little better. I am thinking about doing a play on it. I'm just trying to see when that play might be okay i know i'm missing some stocks oh s&p 500 ran down his support 566.65 three days in a row look at the five minute chart look at that support hit bounced up support bounced up and then today support bounce up support stalled and a little bounce up so 566.65 that is your support on the s&p 500 we do have big news tomorrow a non-farm unemployment change unemployment rates average hourly earnings about an hour before the market opens watch that uh that's hopefully it moves the market and gives us a cleaner direction push because it'll just be easier to trade tomorrow if it kind of just stalls out tomorrow might just stall out in the morning session so just be mindful of that i would probably say let it move about 10 minutes 15 minutes after we open to see if direction really confirms but if not might not even trade tomorrow we pretty much hit our goal by wednesday so 
yesterday and today were pretty much all extra trades but same levels on sp500 and we're kind of just watching those supports to kind of give us a smaller sign of when the sp500 might want that bigger crash because whenever that happens i do plan on getting put options for that okay so thank you guys for watching the video make sure you guys join the team first in the description to join the discord uh any questions email me will now gmail.com and always remember no recommendation to buy or sell anything just for education purposes only so do not trade anything you see here in the video i will catch you guys on the next one bye